Hey, what's up? It's Tackless. This is part three of my Terminal Island playthrough. I am both live streaming this and recording it at the same time. So if anyone watching my live stream, um, if they have any questions or if they have any comments or anything that they want to say about Terminal Island, please leave a comment in the chat and I will address it. Lightspeed boots, Sean says. Is that um, an item you think I should add? Let's see. I wonder if I can craft this. No, probably can't. Uh, short on iron. All right. Well, now that we've got, we, the, what we've just done so far, let's check our story progression. Is we've downloaded the schematics and the next thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to collect the power core, which is, um, pretty, pretty nasty place. But I'm going to reduce some more resource harvesting quickly here. Malachi says a save system would be nice. I intended to have a save system. I was going to put in a second world. That way we could use the massive world builder and whatnot to uh, have a save function. But I just frankly ran out of time. That is something I intend to add though. So then in the future, you don't have to do this all in one, one playthrough. Because this is a lot to do in one sit down. Alright, so we've got the flashlight which is really handy. We've got the axe that gives a random chance to double the resources, which is extra handy. We've got a wolf that is dead, but I can't pick up his meat because I'm full on hunger and I have full reserve food. So let's go ahead and do some more harvesting. Mainly I'm looking for iron and stone. And I think you guys have noticed, and I was hoping that this wouldn't come across as a bug, but when you're near an enemy, it doesn't allow you to interact with things. Because it was getting a little weird, mostly because before when I allowed you to interact near enemies, the main method of evading enemies was the strafe, which is the, also the same button you use to interact. So when you were fighting enemies near an interactable and you strafed, you'd start interacting and then make yourself vulnerable and then die. So that's why I added that system. More iron. Oh, that was a lot that time. All right, let's see. Let's slowly make our way over to the power core. And if we had forgotten what to do, we can always press the objective arrow. I'll probably make a tutorial about how to do the objective arrow because it's actually super simple once you get a couple little fiddly things done right. Take out the goblins. If you're wondering why when you kill a goblin they drop an apple, is because I wanted the goblins to drop something that would increase your health, but a goblin dropping meat didn't sound too appetizing because who would want to eat goblin meat? So I changed it to they drop an apple. All right, let's... Pretty close to the... Um, power core over here. Now I am curious, in this section up here with the power core, was it hard to do the platforming across this water? Because me as the developer of the game, and I had to do this bit 40, 50 times at least, I fell in the water a lot. I mean, I could usually jump out before I died, but um, just curious if, if maybe I should add an extra platform or two in there. All right, harvest some more resources. Okay, so we're gonna hop over. Over here, we're gonna interact with this thing. And it says I need two Titan gears, five Titan neon transformers, and one key card. And if anyone got stuck here, which I'm hoping they didn't, but the key card is here. The first gear is here. There's a neon transformer there. There's a neon transformer over here and there. There's another gear here. Oh, found the water. I'm good. Pick up the gear. There's another transformer here. There's another one here. 
There's one right here. And interestingly enough, I actually added six Neon Transformers. That way, if you miss one, you can still win. And you interact with this crate, but I think I accidentally did it earlier while I was resource harvesting. Get out of my way, wolf. There we go. So I think I've got all the stuff I need. Oh, charcoal! Charcoal! Ah, oh, charcoal fell. Oh, yeah, it floats. I don't know if real charcoal floats or not, but we're going to go with it. Alright, so... Let's see. Michael says uh, there is a booster pack glitch where you can infinitely jump. Well, I tried to limit that so that you couldn't infinitely jump with the booster pack. I, I'm guessing it's probably... Well, it is possible, apparently. But honestly, it's not that big a deal. Nowhere in the game is is it vital that you can't access it until you get the booster pack. Actually, the booster pack really has no purpose in the game. I added it really early on just to see if I could do it and never found a reason to remove it. But nothing in the game is inaccessible unless you have the booster pack. I guess the center island is pretty tough to get to without the booster pack. There's a swimming glitch. Like here, I'll just show you. Okay, so that didn't work that time. But there's a swimming glitch that if you keep attacking, you can go across the water just by attacking. Um, so you can get to that center island before you're supposed to, but the game setup is such that nothing happens if you do. All right, so we've got the core. Let's take a look at our story objectives again. Story progression, we've collected the core. Oh yeah, and this was that wonderful spot where I ran out of time. So from here on, we just have to kind of figure it out. Anyways, we've got our trusty objective arrow. So now, let's follow the paths. Actually, let's pick up more stuff. Look at that, I'm starting to actually get a significant amount of resources. More Creolisk. Sean says, how do you equip weapons and switch back and forth? Well, let me go ahead and craft the knife over here. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> uh. I'm going to go ahead and craft the knife. And I'll go craft the black powder pistol in a second. Come on. Take out the wolf. Who drops charcoal for some reason. Ow. That hurt a lot. You know, I say the goblins are really easy, but when they gang up on you, it actually, it actually can just wreck you. Let's make the knife. So, the way that we equip weapons is you press and hold left bumper, you point up, left, right, down, and while you're pointing, you release the bumper. And that's how you switch. Let's go ahead and open up this shelter. I'm going to go ahead and harvest more stuff because, well, this is a pretty important part of the game. In early versions of this game, and I actually posted some versions of the game where this was a thing, this was a wooden log house that wasn't visible until you repaired the shelter with that flag. And then the uh, the wood house kind of appeared. And I liked that, but there's two reasons why I removed that. The first reason was it um, didn't really feel that necessary to have a tiny little wooden shelter. That it felt also, it felt really Minecrafty to have you build yourself a wooden house. And when you were inside of it, because all the walls were rounded, kind of wooden textures, the camera was really wonky. So I decided to remove that, and I went with just a basic little Titan metal building. Anyways, there we go. Okay, so we've got a food generator. Make some food. Um, here we have the black powder pistol, which we can create and equip. I know the icon is of a normal pistol, but they don't have a black powder pistol as an icon in the game. Let's go craft a couple more bullets for it. Okay, I got 13. 23, that should be plenty. 
Now that we have two of these fast travel units up, we can teleport. But before we do that, since we're trying to craft everything here, let's go ahead and try to craft the booster pack. I haven't actually crafted the booster pack in a while. Malachi asks, how did you come up with the idea for Terminal Island? It's a very creative game. Well, the inspiration for it came from a lot of different places. Um, <clears throat> the kind of the mood and setting was somewhat inspired by Fallout, I guess you could say. That being said, I haven't played... When I started developing this game, I hadn't played a Fallout game. Since then, I've played Fallouts 3 and 4. Um... But when it came up with the idea, I hadn't played a Fallout. It was mostly just kind of the idea or the concept of a barren, dead wasteland. Um, the actual core gameplay where you harvest things and you craft things was not inspired by Minecraft. It was actually somewhat inspired by a game called uh, Radiation Island, I think. R something like that. It's an iPhone game, which is a little odd. It, it's totally an awesome game. You guys should go pick it up. It's kind of clunky, but it's also a really well done game. Um, but that had a similar idea of a big island with resources that spawned around and you have to pick them up and craft stuff. What am I short on? Iron. Two more iron. Um, that was probably the main inspiration for this game was Radiation Island. Although I took the idea of the random buildings and stuff to a whole different level. Because on Radiation Island, only things that are random are like the the iron, the ore, stuff like that. Honestly, the idea of having randomized buildings, that just came out of my head. I didn't get that from inspiration from anywhere. I just thought it'd be cool to have randomized world where every time you played it, everything was different. Um... <clears throat> Trying to think if there's anywhere else that I had major inspiration from. Um, that was probably it. A lot of my other concepts I just came up with over time. And some things just kind of developed naturally as I created the world. There we go. Now I can go create the booster pack. But thank you, for Malachi, for saying it was a creative world. Alright, let's go make that booster pack. I'm curious. Ha! I can do that. <laughs> now, you can't do that until the generator is powered on. It doesn't let you interact with that, um, that workbench until you've powered the generator on. So now I've got the booster pack, which... I'm trying to figure out how one would do an infinite jump glitch. Alright, let's see. Oh, kind of like, kind of like that. Eh, I don't know. That's not working well for me. Whatever. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. There we go. Kill some more of these guys. And now that I've just spent most of my iron, um, well, let's probably go on and continue with the story because I've crafted everything that there is around here to craft. Oh, there's, a, there's one last thing that we can do. One last thing. And that's craft the mini-boss. Actually fixes generator, but whatever. The mini-boss... Over here. Not really... You don't have to do it at all to beat the game. But if you do do it, you get a free energy shield. So, I guess it kind of works out. You can get an energy shield before you craft... Uh, the one from the Titan facilities, and it's actually a half decent shield. Oh, is that it? That's really all it takes. Malachi posted that if you just kind of press and hold it and then release, you can jump forever. Huh. Alright, well. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. Oh yeah, 
my brother just commented that I had a similar conf concept for a sci-fi setting right after Project Spark Full Release came out. Uh, where you crash landed and you have to pick up resources and figure out how to get home. I did have a similar concept, but it wasn't nearly as fledged, full-fledged out. And um, it didn't have any of the randomness built in. Alright, so this is the... Uh, would you like to repair the Titan Industries generator? It powers a nearby defense system. Which sounds pretty innocuous. But if you uh, were to read this little chat dialogue, it kind of tells you that the defense system kills everyone. We're going to do it anyways. I'm going to pull out my gun to do this because that'll make life a lot easier. Come on. There we go. Um, yep, he takes his time reviving again, but... Now, the first phase is the easiest. He's super easy to hit and kill and all that because he has... Uh, like, everything is a hit reaction, but, oh boy. His second and third phases, he um, doesn't react when you hit him, so he's a lot tougher. But, if you have the knife, he's not too bad. He's kind of like a mini version of the, the Creolis Golem that comes up later. But if you have the pistol, he's really no problem at all. There we go, that's the second phase. And then when he boots back up. Now if you notice now, he's both smoking and sparking to kind of show that he's taking damage. Hit him again. And we'll hit him again. And that time he dies. I did have some plans for him to boot back up and be kind of like a companion. Or at least someone who stays in this area and kills things. But now he says that he's malfunctioned. And stuff. Here's that. I'm not going to take that shield because I really like the health regenerating features of my current shield. So I'm just going to leave it. Picked up the Creolisk and then left. So that's everything that you can build, craft, do in this first area. <clears throat> Let's advance with the story. Might as well stop by the uh, mining facility and pick up everything that we can do there as well. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording again. If you want to continue watching... You can continue watching on part four. I am still streaming it, and I'm not going to stop the stream, but here we go. This is the end of part four, and you can come back to see what happens in part